Hello and welcome to another Code Rage session. This is Olaf Monian, and today I'm gonna talk about interweb and how to build more modern web applications by plugging in Bootstrap. Well, first let's have a look what interweb actually is. Interweb is a web application framework for Delphi or C++ Builder and has been bungled since many years with uh, Delphi or C++ Builder. Um, it's actually a technology which is not very new. Um, the, the core of it has been developed many years ago and it still works very reliable and is used by many customers to basically build uh, enterprise um, applications that are easy to deploy, easy to maintain. Um, over the years though, the interface that you build with interweb applications may look a little bit outdated. It looks like, well, uh, an older application. It doesn't have all the fancy buttons and all the fancy fonts, maybe. Of course, you can do quite a lot by using um, external components, such as components from um, TMS software or other um, vendors that are delivering third-party controls for interweb. But, well, to make your application out of the box more uh, modern looking like we are going to use um, Bootstrap as an example. So Interweb itself, for those who don't know, Interweb is a framework that offers you to develop desktop applications or actually inter web applications in a very desktop-like uh, manner. So you don't have to think in HTML, you don't have to think about posts or uh, how to um, well, actually talk to a web server with your client. You, you just develop your application very similar to the way you would develop your desktop or maybe mobile application. It's actually free in Delphi, C++ Builder Professional and Enterprise Editions. It, of course, comes with um, different um, features in each case and there is actually even a more sophisticated edition called Ultimate Available which allows you to develop uh, or to use other options and has more development uh, deployment options. Um, Interop has the advantage, the big advantage uh, compared to any other technology from uh, for Delphi developers that you really get started easily. You build your Delphi project and just start um, dropping components on, on your forms. So it's, it's very much the same as starting off a new desktop application. That's the reason why Interweb is very attractive to, to get your internal web applications done easily. Uh, it's a Windows Server based technology. So what you get is something for Windows machines. So you would be able to deploy to ISAPI applications as a Windows service or if you like, which is actually more for uh, testing um, situations as a standalone server. So first let's have a look at Delphi and how to create your first internet project. So this is um, Red Studio 10.1 Berlin and when you go to new items there would be a interweb folder and there you just click on the interweb application wizard. All right. Um, you would start your first application as standalone application that creates a standalone executable that you can just run on your machine and debug it and even run the first demos of uh, your machine. Um, you just leave the other options um, the way they are. Um, I'm just compiling to the temp directory here, which is fine for now. So just click OK. After a while, you will get your um, interweb project. And like in any other desktop applications, there is a form, a main form. This main form is called TIW form 39 for whatever reason. So this is the main form. Just switch to the design. It looks pretty much like a VCL or FireMonkey form. And you can start dropping your components on this form. So, for example, let's, let's have a list box. Um, of course, we are not using VCL or FireMonkey controls, but 
interrupt controls. All interrupt controls just start off with a TIW. So I'm going to use a TIW list box. So let's move this box to the left. Um, let's place an edit. IW edit in that case. So the edit on top of the list box. And you may actually guess it. We will have a button. So this is an interrupt button again. And oops. And you would just create the form, position the controls like in any other um, VCL or FireMonkey application. So let's have an event by double clicking the button. And here we go. Um, IW list box one items add. And here we're going to add in uh, the content of the uh, edit. IW edit one uh, text. So this all looks very similar and uh, you, you, can, you can just run the application now. So the, the main form in a VCL application would just come up. Um, here we just see basically a, a debug or information screen for the running server. So what you get is actually a server. And this control screen allows you to start web browser which you can of course do manually but here if you hit the button it will already have the correct um, URL in it. For some reason it sh has shown up uh, an error which is not really important here. So this is the uh, main screen of the application we just developed. So you have your edit and I can add in Olaf uh, hit the button and hit the edit again and enter Thomas or whoever and it would actually work like a VCL application. There is actually even no back button so the back button is disabled. It really works like a stateful application. Th think of your VCL or FireMonkey application. You usually don't have a back button ju that just goes back to the steps that you entered before if you want to have a back button, you would implement it as your own button. So it, it's completely running in the browser. It's an HTML application. It, it's basically a combination of HTML and JavaScript and some CSS um, produced by Interrep in the background. We can just have a quick look at what it looks like. So we go to the uh, web development options, show source, and this is what the um, page looks like. Uh, as HTML source. So you see quite some HTML down here, input variables and JavaScript up here, and of course several uh, JavaScript um, libraries being pulled in. So what you get is really full um, HTML. So this is not um, something tricky running um, in the memory, uh, creating VCL forms and, and sending snapshots or something. It's really um, every button, every control rendering to HTML and JavaScript and that's what you get here. Okay, um, let's have a quick look maybe at the uh, debugger functionality. So let's go to the um, uh, IDE, set a breakpoint here and switch back to the browser. Oops, and um, hit the button type test and you see um, the, the debugger just stops on the line of code that you would expect to be run and you see well it's working like in any VCL or FryMonkey application. All right. So of course this application is also multi-user uh, capable. So actually simulate a second user. Um, I'm gonna start just um, Chrome. Um, so Chrome is my second user here and um, well to start another um, instance of that application for that user I of course could hit the uh, Chrome button here in the inter application control uh, window but of course um, a regular user would hit a link or type in the URL so what is the URL? Uh, it's basically this um, well local host it's where it's a machine we are running on and a certain port number this port number is configured 
in the application uh, to be where um, the the HTTP server listens to. So when you just hit hit in that, um, you basically see uh, the start, the main form of the application. So let's uh, simulate a second user. This is user two. Um, hit the button, and here this is stuff from user one. So what you see is that we have now, oops, that we now have um, two instances of the application running, two users hitting our uh, server. Um, the server is currently a standalone server, which is a Windows application listening to uh, our, um, well, to, to users to connect to. Well, we have a couple of open sessions that I didn't terminate. This is fine. So for development and debugging purposes, you would run on this standalone application. Um, later on, you would probably deploy to your IIS server as an ISAPI DLL or maybe even as a Windows service application that would run completely independently of uh, IIS. So, but this is something we are not covering today. The only thing I'm going to show you is the place where you would actually configure um, this port for a standalone or Windows service application. So go back to Delphi and let's have a quick look at the structure of the, the, um, the actual project. So I told you this is the main form. Well, looks very similar to what we know from VCL or FireMonkey. We have a form and a couple of controls in it and we have a uh, button click event. So there's another beast, which is the server controller. This is what the name says. It's where you configure the server. So this has a um, virtual part, and here you can actually set several options uh, of your application. For example, the port that the standalone server would listen on. So of course, there are a couple of things that you can uh, configure. We are not covering that today. Um, when you look at the application, well, it looks like, well, what it does. Um, edit, a list box, a button. Not very modern. It, it's not really what you would probably uh, expect from, uh, well, from a more modern application. Now, this is where Bootstrap comes into the play. So, let's go to the um, presentation. Um, what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is basically an open source HTML5, HTML5 framework which has the goal to deliver more responsive and mobile uh, friendly web applications. It's been originally developed by uh, Twitter. They started off or they wanted to have a really responsive and modern um, UI for their uh, Twitter uh, front page, so they um, developed quite a lot of things. Uh, finally, at it was released into open source and nowadays a lot of um, or many many projects HTML projects are uh, heavily depending on bootstrap um, the original URL where you could read about bootstrap itself is getbootstrap.com and there is quite some history on it uh, and you can get an idea how bootstrap actually works but it's not really for Interrap because Interrap is, well, it's a Delphi framework, it's special and needs to know how to render HTML. You cannot just throw in Bootstrap and expect it to work. So this is where um, Interrap Bootstrap, um, the Interrap Bootstrap framework comes into the play. This is an open source um, wrapper around Bootstrap for Interrap. So this brings in all the features that you uh, would like to have from Bootstrap and, um, well, brings it to Interrap. Um, important is that it requires a current Interrap version. So we are going to do two things now. I'm going to show you um, a couple of websites so that you get an idea of what Bootstrap might look like. And then we are going back to Delphi to um, show you what you need to do to get your bundled De Interrap edition running with Bootstrap. So we need to update Interrap and we need to install Bootstrap. Alright, so 
let's go to um, to the website and have a quick look. This is Bootstrap, the Bootstrap main page. Um, it covers all the history, all all the available options, and all the controls and everything that they have and how they work from the JavaScript. Uh, perspective from the CSS perspective. So this is hardcore HTML, um, JavaScript and CSS coding. So for those of you who are interested, uh, you, you can have a look at that. Um, then this is a demo uh, being run by some guys uh, who are developing the uh, Interrupt Bootstrap framework. And this might give you a very first idea of what your interweb application might look like. So this is an interweb application now, which is driven by Bootstrap. So you see all those fancy things that you might have seen or might see on the Bootstrap page. So this is all what we are looking for. So this application looks probably much more nicer than uh, what we have seen previously. So you get all those fancy things here, just uh, have a look at the edits here, they have those nice uh, round edges, well, edges don't have to be round, but anyway, uh, you get all these features, even the uh, responsiveness is done very nicely, so you might see that the upper gray area here um, actually goes from a two column design into a one column design if there is not enough space. So this is all stuff coming from Bootstrap. And finally this is the um, main uh, GitHub page for um, Internet Bootstrap and it does have all the information that you basically need to get uh, started with Bootstrap. So we are going to the GitHub page and uh, when you read through the uh, documentation, you will easily find out that you need a more uh, updated interweb version than uh, that, that that comes with uh, in, uh, with Delphi 10.1 um, shipped. So let's go to Delphi and see what we need to do here. All right, in Delphi, there is an interweb version pre-installed. So, assuming that you never touched Interweb before, then you should see something here under Components, Packages, and when you scroll down to I like Interweb, you would see an Interweb Design Package um, version 14.0. This is actually not the version that comes with um, was uh, RAD Studio 10.1. This is already the updated version. I'm going to show you how to get to that version. What you would see is a version name that refers, for whatever reason, to Delphi XE6. So this is the indicator that you ha don't have the most current version. So what you would do is just remove that package here. I don't do that because I don't want to uh, mess my uh, installation now, but you just select the package, the interweb package, and just say remove. This is German for remove. So I don't do that here, so just assume you did that. And the next step is that we have to close down Delphi. All right, we're gonna close down um, these pages. And what we need is the, um, the home page of interweb, which is a2z.com interweb. So here you go to Downloads and you notice that there are different versions of Delphi or Red Studio and different versions of Interweb. What you are looking for is this uh, Interweb version. This is Interweb 14. That's what we want to use. The first thing is you need a free license key. That's the way how they um, check that you are running um, a valid Delphi license and you need to, to have an interrupt license key for that. So you go to this request a free key first and here you get 
there is a URL A to Z purchase point. This is the the um, website where you get your free uh, interrupt license key. And of course, this is the same page where you would buy the more sophisticated editions that they sell. So you go here, enter your email address, and if you are not registered already, they will uh, guide you through a registration registration process. This is all uh, easy. I just I'm just gonna enter my own address, and um, see where we where we go here. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't like my. Uh, here we go. Um, .net and it wants a password and next and here what you want to do is basically register your IDE so you can just say what IDEs you have this is easy and then you go to interweb as product and here there is free licenses go to free licenses request bundled license that what we, that's what you want so and here you have to actually select the version berlin and the edition that you have uh, this is what you want and the next thing that you need is the ide hash string i know it it, it sounds complicated and and it might be look like a mess but this utility you would find by following this link here so you can just download that when you did that go here it it, it comes as a zip file go here uh, in iw key request exit just start that that's fine select your version and generate the ide hash key that's the way how they see what license key in your Delphi is and they just combine that with the um, license that they will issue to you for interrupt so you need to copy that so I'm just doing that here just close this this is fine and go back and then you just insert that here and by request it will generate a key you will receive an email address an email and in that email you will actually find a license key that looks pretty much like that. It starts off as a plus zero zero one, and well, I don't show you the rest for uh, understandable reasons. So, this is the license key that you need in one of the next steps. Keep that, please. So, we are leaving here. So, the next thing that you have to do is to, to uninstall or remove the already existing version of Interrupt. So you already um, removed the package from Red Studio or um, Delphi um, by removing that um, installed package. Um, so the next step is to actually remove all the files that came with um, Delphi, uh, all the interrupt files, of course. So we're going back here to download, download interrupt 14, and down here we get the interweb bundled removal tool so follow the link and somewhere in here download and download the interweb bundled removal tool here and here you would get the download once you have that file start the file so this is again asking for your Delphi version all the ones that it detected are um, enabled so in my case I'm just selecting Berlin and you would also delete all the interrupt packages and um, this is only to see what files uh, would be deleted and well in my case I already ran this process so I'm not doing that again to um, well avoid any damage here but in your case just hit remove and it will uh, list and remove about 900 files so I'm just closing here. So we removed all the stuff. You might actually start um, uh, Delphi just to make sure it still runs. It's not complaining about missing packages or something. It should just run and start up cleanly. 
And when you did that, we are ready for the next step. So make sure Delphi is closed again. You go to the downloads and here download interrupt 14, download um, 14 or 63 in that case. Just download the file, save it, and run it. And the file is here somewhere. Here we go. So just run the file and uh, accept the agreement. Um, select a directory, select the Delphi version that you want to install into, and then here, this is the important dialog. Here, this is the dialog where you actually enter the uh, the key that we generated on this other A to Z purchase point web page, and insert it here, and this makes sure that your um, bundled version has all the features that, uh, well, are, um, well, in, 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 in your Delphi edition. So I'm just canceling here, and after that, um, start up Delphi again. It should show interrupt as one of the uh, features or components installed in this uh, startup screen. So the next thing now is to get uh, Bootstrap installed. To install Bootstrap for interrupt, you go to this uh, GitHub page again and go to clone and download. In my case, I just downloaded the zip file. So if, if you want to do it more sophisticated, you, of course, can you, create, you can create your own uh, GitHub uh, clone for uh, this project. So in my case, I just downloaded the zip file. I put the zip file just uh, here. So all of the uh, Bootstrap stuff is somewhere on my uh, local drive. So we are going to Delphi. And in Delphi, you have basically to uh, do this, uh, D1001. Um, so you basically open those two package files, uh, or actually the uh, project files for the packages. And what you need to do is you basically, um, you basically uh, build the IW um, bootstrap package and then you build and install the um, the uh, design time package so I built it and now I can install it I actually already have it installed but that really doesn't matter yet so we got all the components installed there are actually two more steps that we want to do uh, the first is we want to add the uh, bootstrap source directory to our library path. So we just take the source file of uh, the source path, uh, go to tools options, and here you add that to the um, library. So this is just the library path, and we add uh, the source of bootstrap. That's fine. Okay, so the next thing is basically optional, but um, the idea is uh, you might have seen on the Bootstrap uh, demo page that I've shown that there are specific um, icons on it. These are actually Unicode icons which are included in a specific font. So there is a demo path and there is bin ww root IWBS uh, and there we got the bootstrap libraries and there is fonts and there is the glyph icons half links regular font you want to add that to your uh, Delphi installation uh, this way you would see all the icons already in the IDE which is not the case if you don't have that uh, font so this is the optional step here okay so so now we should basically be ready to run the uh, supplied bootstrap for interweb demos. So let's go to the uh, bootstrap directory. So there is demo and we take the IWBS demo and there is the uh, project file. Uh, you might want to delete the DPROJ file. Um, it might contain options uh, uh, directory settings that don't apply to your um, computer. I did that already here, so I'm just opening the project. And you can see there are a couple of forms. 
and uh, after compiling we should be able to run the application in in that case they actually used their own um, well standalone server form which is um, well something you don't need to do you could actually remove that and, and have your own uh, and have the standard interrep um, standalone control form so this is just a something that's not really neat. so this one is listening on port 887 so let's start up a new browser instance localhost 87 and the demo starts off so you now see exactly the same demo that we have seen online previously and it has all the features that uh, interweb um, bootstrap uh, introduces so you, you get all the fancy buttons and and all the items and um, all the features that you would expect from um, well bootstrap plugged into interweb all right um, this is a very first starter to get started with um, bootstrap for interweb it, it Con there are several steps that are um, more or less complicated and not, not easy to understand if you never used Interrep. Um, the next step would be to uh, develop your own application and um, this is something I'm gonna show in one of the next demos I will probably publish on our website and um, will make available online. So, um, so this is basically what I had to show for today. Um, the next is, of course, uh, getting the materials. And uh, if you like, you, of course, can contact me. So, well, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this session. And, of course, I'm open for questions now. Okay, great session. I love Interweb and Bootstrap, so it's cool to see them working together like that. Very cool. Thanks. Um, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> and of course, there's much more you can actually uh, tell about about the uh, all the details, how to do the styling and, and stuff like that. But that would take probably a full day. <laughs> so this is basically to get get the people set up, which might be complicated sometimes. Yeah, and and once they get to, from that point there, they can get the. Uh go through the bootstrap documentation and such to uh, figure out how to take advantage of all the all the neat stuff there. So if you know a bit about bootstrap, many of the properties you will find in, in all these bootstrap components um, will make more sense, of course, because they, they have the same names and, and share the same semantics then, of course. Yep. So the question here, what versions of uh Delphi include interweb or what editions of include interweb um interweb is in Delphi professional enterprise and well architect so the the professional edition comes with a more limited uh interweb version so you basically can only deploy as a standalone application which would work for very small applications that don't run 24-7, something like that. And the uh, Enterprise Edition comes with uh, uh, the possibility to, to, displo to, dis to deploy as a uh, Windows service. And then, of course, there is also a um, commercial edition um, that they call Alternate, and there you can deploy as iSAPI, for example. As well. Does IW Bootstrap handle grids, for example, rows and columns? Um, yes, there is actually even a, a grid demo. Uh, in, in the demo I've shown, there is um, a menu button. And when you click there, there is the well-known um, uh, the fish demo that we all know. <laughs> and there is a bootstrap driven grid so you can explore all the features if you like there so it, it, it has all the features that you're looking for probably what's the best source of information for Delphi plus interweb bootstrap information samples etc the best source of information well 
Um, the official support forum for Interrep is somewhere in the Embarcadero forums. There is an Interrep forum. So this is probably the best place to, to ask questions about Interweb. And of course, they have some information on, on the website. And for Bootstrap, there is a support news group on Google, which is uh, linked uh, on, on the uh, GitHub web page. So not, not, not a lot of resources for the two combined, but good resources for them individually. And now uh, that you if you're looking, yeah, if you're looking for a book or something, there is not, not, nothing like that. Can you use FireDAC in an interweb application? Yes, absolutely. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that every user needs his own uh, FD connection. So there is a uh, user session unit which looks like a data module, which is actually a data module. And there you put a FireDAC connection and this user session data module gets instantiated once per user, once per session. So you have to make sure that you don't put your FireDAC uh, connection on, on the server controller. That wouldn't work. Right, that makes sense. So Mel's asking, says, do I understand correctly that interweb is for website UI, therefore VCL, FireMonkey, and interweb could possibly share dot pass units? Well, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. So if, if, if you're asking for the possibility to share code between VCL, FireMonkey, and um, interweb application, that's something that you can do. You can share code, for example, that's kept in data modules, but you have to be very, very aware that um, every call that comes from interrupt code is executed in a uh, background thread, in, in a worker thread. So if you um, have code in, your, in, in some data module that is used in a VCL application, you have to make sure that where you go in that this code is really thread safe. The other way it wouldn't work. And you have to keep an eye on uh, not using global variables. They are basically a very uh, easy sign that your code wouldn't work with interweb. So global variables and code that wouldn't work from uh, multiple threads cannot be shared. Okay. With interweb we'll be able to get uh, data from a web application via REST servers? Yes, um, that's something th you can actually do. Um, the the, um, inter the interweb um, server controller uh, has events where you can hook in your own um, well endpoint handling for returning uh, REST server data. And of course, well, if you're asking for REST in general, of course, interrupt applications can consume um, REST APIs in, 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 in themselves. So, so that's possible as well, of course. Is there some sort of step-by-step -step guide to goes over the next steps from, from after your presentation? Um, that's something I'm thinking about to, to write <laughs> because uh, it, it takes some time for the uh, beginner who, who's never used interweb to to make the next or to to get to the next level of of um, bootstrap and uh, yes that's something I'm thinking about and I will probably write a couple of blogs and um, maybe even post a, a video to uh, well get more people onto it. It can they find your blog at developer-experts.net? Yes. Okay. There is currently not an entry, but there is uh, that that's going to be back soon. Fantastic. Can controls be grouped into something similar to a T panel so they can scale with a line and anchor similar to, similarly similarly? Yes. Um. There there is no T panel component. They call it for whatever reason um, region. So a region is basically what a T panel for VCL um, development is. And this, re this region can, well, group components. If you're using a uh, plain interweb, then it works basically like the way the VCL would work or FireMonkey would work with uh, layouts and, and panels. If you're using 
um, bootstrapped though, then the, the region is only used to, well, to really group those components and the actual layout is uh, calculated by the bootstrap engine. So it, it's basically uh, going to be a, a flow layout inside that region. So you, you can have multiple regions on a form and if, um, well, this is all about responsible, responsive design. If you have two regions side by side and have a large screen, both, both regions would be displayed side by side. And if you look at the same page from your uh, mobile phone, then region one would appear on top of region two. So this is the way how to tell uh, the bootstrap engine uh, how to well work with responsive um, layouts. Can you work with existing uh, bootstrap sites or is this for new development only? It's basically for new de development. So if, if you're starting off a new project, then you would decide, well, I'm going to use uh, interrupt with bootstrap. But if you already have something, uh, you have to use the IWBS something components for uh, the bootstrap. That's what we installed during the, um, well, during the session. Can we use raw HTML code from within interweb? Yes. Um, there are several controls that have a raw text uh, property, or they even have uh, HTML uh, properties that would render out just the way you type it in. So yes, you, you can use HTML. Right. Excellent. All right, there we go. Someone came on unmuted. I got it. <laughs> Although, you know, it's kind of a catchy tune. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gregory's saying he would love a simple bootstrap interweb tutorial that shows login, logout, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Sounds Yeah, th that's something, that, a simple um, demo application that, that has all the, uh, well, business type of coding stuff in it. That's something that I'm thinking about, too to bring online on, on my blog. Excellent. Uh, have you used Interweb to implement a deployed production application? What about robustness and scalability? Well, I'm working with customers of mine that are using Interweb uh, since years. And um, I am very convinced that the uh, application, the Interweb applications are stable as long as your code is working. Uh, I've seen code that didn't work and they blamed Interrupt for not working. And in fact, it was usually problems with uh, multi-threading aspects. So uh, yes, there are several um, customers I'm working with that have live applications uh, and um, they are not just small ones. That some of them have really large applications and they are working just fine. Uh, we'll uh, IW Bootstrap be updated to Bootstrap 4? Well, that probably depends on, on the guy that is behind this uh, GitHub archive. So if there are many, many people uh, going in, into GitHub and adding comments that, that they would like that, I guess he's going to be, uh, he's uh, going to be pushed a little bit to implement Bootstrap 4, yes. <laughs> so yeah, come on and, and tell the uh, tell on good GitHub that it, that you like it, so <laughs> that he sees that there is uh, some need for it. Yeah, that's a really good point. If you go, I know as a developer, is if you put something on my GitHub and you start getting lots of stars and comments and stuff like that, that's a really good motivator to move forward yeah, right. and do things. So go out there and let them know you're interested in it and what you'd like to see, and that's great. Uh, Peter's saying, why don't we have the current version uh, ready to go? Um, I guess in uh, install. Why do you have to go through and manually go out and get the get the update for interweb? Um, good question. It's something I cannot answer. It's yeah. something you guys have to answer. I I think that it's an issue with um, timing of the interweb releases with the timing of the Rad Studio yeah. releases. I know that's been an issue in the past. I'm not sure if that's particularly this instance this time. But sometimes we don't yeah. get the uh, get the, of course. the the bits and time. I've been, I've been on the interrupt development team, and I worked with Embarcadero to um, get the um, versions 
um, delivered and it, it's a complex process to get this done so um, well and, and the licensing thing is another part that is um, well a little bit complicated so well you, you get a lot of code but there is a little price by updating uh, manually so I, I, I don't think this will improve uh, soon yeah and in um, our releases we have a, a pretty long cycle that we'll work on to get through all the testing and stuff like that so even if the release is done right before our release the bootstrap rele or the uh, in a release it still takes a while for us to get it incorporated get it tested so um, yeah so question here again about your blog it's at developer-experts.net and a question if this is the first implementation of bootstrap for Delphi very exciting been a fan of bootstrap for a while well there have certainly been um, other approaches and um, other people using bootstrap more or less manually but this one is really um, a sophisticated uh, approach they try to get almost every single property that's available on bootstrap uh, ported to to interrupt or wrapped to interrupt so yes it, it's the first one which is really comprehensive ah uh, excellent is there a limit to the number of connections simultaneous connections that uh, interweb app can have and if so how many this depends if you only have the um, license from delphi professional edition then there is a maximum of five sessions so um, this me basically means you don't have more than five connections to the server at the same time. If you have the enterprise edition, there is no real limit. It depends more or less on, on the hardware. And if you are thinking about hundreds of connections, then you, then you really, really should run this, this uh, application on a Windows server type. So if you run it on a work, workstation, there are several limitations that come from the um, operating system. So you need Delphi Enterprise or the separate ultimate license from Interweb. Okay. Do you think there will be uh, website templates like you have on WIWET.com, which have the site framework already built and you use that as a startup project and fill in the pieces? Well, there are not really um, such templates, but uh, you can always look for demos, uh, maybe f demos that are in, in the um, Bootstrap install, install. But of course, um, it would be very nice to have ready to go templates, but I don't think we there, there are any. It, it's like in Delphi. I mean, in, in Delphi, there is not really a template to, to to completely get started. Well, for Fire Monkey, we have those simple templates that uh, have the menus in it and, and stuff like that. But, well, ready to go templates, no. Okay. Are there any efforts to create a material design version of Interweb? A Vine version? Material design. Um, Sorry. Material design like Android uses? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't that, get that question. Uh, material design, you know, like with the kind of responsive, where things move around and and have look like a material. The new uh, um, Android design philosophy. Um, I'm not sh really sure about that. I don't think so. Okay, lots of comments here that people are really excited about this presentation, Olaf. So thank you for putting that together for us. This is uh, really cool to see. Um, this moving forward and availability of being able to do this with Interweb. All right, thank you. Yep. So there's the uh, links up there on the site. I put the uh, getbootstrap.com and here's the GitHub for uh, IW Bootstrap Framework. And then here again is the uh, links for the materials that o Olaf put together, which I put that in the chat window, and also uh, Olaf's blog and email address, as well as uh, Facebook and Twitter, so you can follow along Olaf and see as he's uh, releasing some more videos and blog posts around this. All uh, right, sounds cool. Are there any real-world websites that people can go check out that are running on Interweb right now? Well, the, the point is, basically all the customers I've been working with Interweb, they are all using Interweb for internal purpose. They have 
large sites, but they are all internal. I I know a few re, a few interweb sites that are uh, public, but it, it's not really um, the common thing. They they uh, use it for internal applications uh, to deploy their applications easily, so, so they have don't have to send around uh, exe files, something like that. So that that's probably the reason why we don't see many of uh, interrupt applications publicly. Uh, publicly. Um, on a2z.com interrupt, there is on the left hand side a um, a menu with use cases. There should be a few. Uh, links to open or public um, um, applications, so you, you might have a look there. Okay, good to know. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you around. Olaf, thanks. All right, you're welcome. See you.